Hi, it's Mark from Nomad Boat Building and I'm here to tell you about the next project that's going to come up. But first I want to let you know that we're going to finish the 2.4 meter series and then we're going to move on to the Bushidori series and pick up where we left off and finish off that project. Now this new project is going to be a custom designed coastal rowing wherry based on the New Jersey Seabright skiff. Now these videos are going to be a little different. They're going to be a little more raw and behind the scenes. So let's take a look at some snippets from the very first episode where I go through the process of creating our first ideation drawing. Hi, it's Mark Rutten. Welcome back to Nomad Boat Building. And I thought we might introduce the next project that's coming up. I got an inquiry a few years ago now to build a New Jersey style Seabright skiff. I mean, this kind of boat goes by a bunch of different names. The general category would be called a wherry. However, sometimes they're referred to as a New York Bay skiff or a Seabright skiff. And Seabright is a little portion of the New Jersey shoreline. This client used to be a lifeguard along the New Jersey shoreline at one time. And uh, they had these very specific boats that they used for the lifeguarding work that were adapted from the fishing industry. So originally they used to fish salmon from these pound nets or these fishing weirs that would be set off the shoreline and they came up with a specific boat that was that would service these nets and as time went on those boats got adapted to lifeguarding and so there's a really unique feature that these particular ones have and that is the use of this boxed keel you can see in these images here uh, we've got a typical transom that comes down to a stern post but instead of a regular planked keel um, on a, like a plank on edge keel creating a skag in the back we have this box configuration in which all the planking comes together at a stern post but it creates this this hollow area in here and um, apparently that really helps you out in terms of keeping the boat from being tripped up uh, on the shoreline and I think it probably adds a little bit more buoyancy at the back end keeping it from being buried in the sand and a few other things. We've been about two years since the uh, conversation started and we've got just this big stack of correspondence and it's nice to know that we've got a customer who's really been thinking about it. Now the main detail is that he really likes this transom right here on this particular boat. So we're going to try and build a boat using this specific transom. So one of my challenges is to try and extrapolate from this one image that I have of this boat to try and come up with a shape of that transom that's going to go onto our own. So we're going to draw ourselves a basic set of lines. This is just a sketch. This is just to get the ball rolling, get our head in the game. You know, maybe we put it to use and maybe we scrap it. First thing I think I want to do is establish the rocker. I'm just going to turn it end for end and use basically the exact same amount of rocker going aft. Although we probably want it a little flatter going aft, so we'll flip that around. Okay, that's a start. When it comes to shear lines, I don't like using sweeps. I'd rather use a, a ship's curve because it just really allows me to sort of play around with it. So if I look at the, just those three points, right now I've got all manner of shape I can play with. If I were looking at that drawing, my guess is it has a rake a boat like that. So I'm going to take that first plank width and I'm going to say that's probably going to be the same up at the bow or close to it. So if we bring that over. Shear planks are often a little bit wider and this, this includes the, the rub rail as well which is not insignificant. At the very least, a shear line can be, or a shear plank can be, something that just adds to the character of the drawing and gives you a little feel for what you're doing. Okay, now that we've got sort of some very rough lines started, I think we're going to do a, just a midship section here. So uh, 
I'll just start by drawing a little bit of a baseline. And no normally we would sort of superimpose this on other areas, but I'm just going to do it separately for now. I'm playing around with this this one ship's curve. This may not be the the right curve for this particular application here, but we'll see. So I, I know I want to we want to keep some flare into this thing. So I don't want to go dead plumb. And maybe we want a little more meat. Hmm. This one with the flatter sections, however, as it approaches that transom, I can't help feeling like these flatter sections might migrate towards that transom shape a little more easily. So if I superimposed my transom onto there, let's see. Now all of these things can be plotted. Yeah, there's the first one. A bunch of sort of chin scratching going on here. So I think, I don't know what I'm going to do here. Um, I think I'll just leave this alone for the moment and we'll come back in a few hours, look at it again. So to try and get a feel for what I like. So it's important to know what doesn't look good as it is to know what does look good. Now, if that strikes your fancy, you might want to join us on Patreon where you'll get access to the full-length version of that video. And all the other videos we'll be producing are going to be based on interests of my viewers. I'll be making those videos accessible to all levels of support. And I won't be leaving you YouTubers out. I'll be producing shorter, more refined versions of these videos and releasing those after the Bushi Dory series is done. So please consider joining us on Patreon. You can find a link in the corner or down in the description. Ciao for now, folks.